In this lesson, we're going to cover two things, count if and sum if. You're going to want to make sure that you've watched two lessons before you watch this one. The first one being the if statement lesson, and the second one being the copying formulas lesson. You need to know how to do a basic if statement, and you need to know what an absolute reference is. Now, I've set up real basic examples for this, uh, a basic milk order in an elementary school type of a situation. So here we've got this sheet that has been handed in, and uh, the secretary's put this in Excel. So here we have uh, simply X's for the kids who wanted white milk here, and X's for the kids who wanted chocolate milk. And we need to know now how much milk to order. So rather than counting them manually, of course, we want these numbers to be generated automatically. So here, when you start your, your count if, it's of course equal first and then count if and open your bracket. Now as soon as you open your bracket they actually give you the formula. So now they want the range. Excel wants you to put in the range. I prefer to click and drag my range in that way I see exactly what it is I'm putting into the range. And next they want the criteria. Now the criteria here isn't a number it's a label, it's a letter, right? It's just an X. So if it was a number, I would simply type the number. So in other words, if, if it's a two, then, then I want you to count all of these. Or if it's a three, then I want you to count all of these. But in this case, it's just simply an X. But because it's just simply an X, I need to put this in quotes. If I didn't, it wouldn't work at all. It would give me a zero. So I gotta put it in quotes and say, look for exactly that label right there, the X. And then I would close my bracket and then I would hit enter. So now it's telling me that I've got four. Now, you're going to want to copy and paste this over and before you do, I always ask myself the question, if I copy this formula over, every cell in the formula follows me. So B7 to B16 turns into C7 to C16 and there are no other cells. So this is going to work beautifully, okay? So now we know that we have four white milks and six chocolate milks. Another way we could have written this formula is I have it, the, the answer that I'm looking for up here. So in other words, if this range has that, then I want you to add it. So I'll, I'll give you an example here. So it's the same formula, it's the same start of the formula, count if, and the range is the same, okay? However, the criteria this time, instead of putting in a label, I say, whatever that cell is. So if anything in this range is equal to that cell, then I want you to count those cells. And that works as well. So those are two different ways of doing them. Now, just beware though, when I go to copy this formula over, again, the rule is every cell in my formula gets copied over, which means I3 will also move to J3. I don't want I3 to move to J3, so I would lock in the I in that formula with a dollar sign. Okay, so I've just changed that formula a little bit because I don't want the I to go to J because there's nothing in J. So now I can copy that over and I'm getting the same answer. Just two different ways of doing the same. Now, moving right along, we're going to go into some if now. Now some if is just a little bit different in a sense that not only will it count how many, but it will then look at another range and add the number that corresponds to that. So now not only do I figured out how many to order, now I, I want to know how much money should be in the envelope that this teacher has sent along. Now, and here here is the formula, some if, so I, I'm going to need to start with some if, and as soon as I open the bracket, once again, they, they remind you of how to type this formula in. So now my range is once again here. Okay, so there's my range. And my cr criteria is the same. I want an X. Then I want you to add this range right here. Now, it's indicating square brackets, but I know that I can get away with not putting those in. OK, 
Okay, that's the range that I want right there. So wherever I happen to have an X, add whatever number happens to be next to there. Because the price is the same for all of them, this makes it quite easy. And now I'm going to close my bracket and hit enter. So now it's telling me that I should have $4. Uh, once again, I can copy this formula all the way over to here if I wanted to. So I'm going to copy that and paste that, and it works beautifully. Once again, I could have used this number, okay, this reference here, this cell reference. So I have the answer that I'm looking for here. In case you happen to not use an X, in case it's a check mark or something like that. All right, so here, rather than use the, f I'll just start this formula from scratch. I'll go sum if, and once again, I'm using this range, and then I'm putting my comma, and then I'm saying the criteria now is this cell, whatever happens to be in that cell, and the range that I want you to add is that one right there, and then I close my bracket, and then I hit enter. And again, if I want to copy this formula over, I need to lock in this G38 so that it doesn't turn into well, something like K38 or something. So I'm just going to lock in the G because I know that's going to want to change. So having locked that in, I can now take that cell and copy it and paste it right here. And I'm getting the exact same answer. Of course, I should be getting the same answer. So now in, a, in, a, in an automated type of fashion, I've set this up so all you need to do is copy and paste the results in here and those formulas will automatically do two things here we'll we'll know how many milks we need to order and down here we'll know automatically how much money should be on the envelope when it gets sent to the office two basic easy examples that you can use and follow when using either of these statements